This meeting is being recorded. Yes, Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Hello, guys. Thank you for invitation. Um, I'm the author of the 64 debugger. Maybe some of you know. I'm just first question. Um, have you had a chance to check my tool, the C64 debugger? Anyone? No? <laughs> Maybe that's cool. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm using this uh, C64 debugger for development of uh, demo effects mainly. Um, and recently I released also the retro debugger, which is an upgraded version of the C64 debugger. I'm going to share the screen in a second um, and show you some tools, some features of this. Um, but anyway, uh, Kind of from the history point of view, um, I started uh, as a kind of demo scene member when I was like maybe 12 years old. That was in um, 90s. Um, and I had a very long break, like 20, 20 years or something like that. Um, some, some years ago, I turned back, let's say, and uh, I'm back in the scene. I, re re I joined Summer, the demo, demo scene group. Oh, Commodore 64 and uh, released some demos. And actually, I was lacking a lot uh, some of tools. I mean, I normally used Vice, of course, everybody's using that. But uh, on my Mac, actually, uh, you maybe remember there was this tool called the uh, ICU, um, which was kind of, I mean, let's say, um, um, let's say, uh, I, 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 that was from Windows and it wasn't working for Mac. So I kind of, <clears throat> decided to create some effect for demo. Um, however, not having tools, um, I started coding this in C, you know, um, I kind of forgot completely at that time how to program in assembly. So just to, you know, create some effect in C, then I created kind of a small emulator, Commodore 64 emulator for this. So kind of I was bleeding my data on the screen and emulating Vic a little bit. And then at some moment I realized that this is a completely not good, you know, way of doing this because we have emulators, very good, perfect, you know. Um, so at that time I used Frodo. Uh, Frodo is, uh, you know, you probably know the, the emulator, which is not very good, especially there, there the Frodo doesn't have, it, it, they, they don't have implemented the, uh, the disk drive, you know, CPU and etc. So most of demos were not working. Um, and uh, this is actually an interesting story because when I added the Frodo emulator to my own OpenGL engine, uh, it simply wasn't working. So um, I kind of displayed the screen and animation was just black, okay? So um, I was like staring on the screen and trying to figure out why it's black. Um, so I, I thought maybe the ROMs were not added, okay? So the files probably of ROM. So and there was empty memory, CPU hit the BRK, you know, CPU jam, and everybody, probably, probably, probably everything was jammed. So um, I didn't have at that time any, you know, code to display uh, data on screen uh, like like that. So, but I had a disassembler, you know. I actually at the time also was using a little bit for Matt Gray's um, music's the Last Ninja stuff, and so I kind of re reverse engineered the last ninja player music player and i had handy let's say the the, the uh, disassembler and it was like really simple i was like okay i don't have a memory viewer but i have this assembler immediately put this to display on the screen um and um it showed the first you know mnemonics uh, of code of of the rom so i said okay the kernel is there but it's not working, why? <laughs> and it was like looking on the code of the Frodo emulator and it hit me that the emulation speed was set to zero. Um, so originally Frodo uh, set this in the, its UI, like setting the emulation speed to 100. And I did that, I set 100 and it started running. And I saw the code running like in real time displaying for me, so the disassembly code, you know? And I was like, little bit shocked <laughs> this view was really you know something that i decided okay i need to do something with this um so as far as i know there wasn't at that time any real-time debugger of the commodore 64 like real-time viewing so then i added of course memory viewer some other things 
And then we had internal summer meeting when I met the guys for the first time in my life and they saw my tool, like it was internal, of course, nobody seen that before. I told, I showed them and they said, no, you, you have to do this. I mean, it's like, you need to finish this tool and especially scrap the Frodo <laughs> emulator and you need to port this to Vice, okay? So I spent literally one month struggling with the Vice source code and you see and uh, ported that to my tool and it started working it was vice 2.4 and when i did that i presented this in one uh, event here in poland uh it's called stary priernik which is like like you know demo demo party and i won there the, <laughs> the wild uh, you know um so i had a lecture there and I won some money so i was like okay <laughs> it's really interesting that people are liking my tool uh, but everybody there said, no, you need to use Vice 3.1 at least, or 3.0, <laughs> and not 2.4. So I had additional months spent, I spent additional months porting this to the newest Vice. And uh, now it's on Vice 3.1. I know it's like also a little bit outdated. I've seen the diff patch of the differences in the source code of Vice, and it's not actually that hard to you know, upgrade this to the recent Vice, but at, you know, it works for me. Vice 3.1 is quite good. Um, anyway, let me share the screen and show you some features of this. Um, I'm not gonna share the sound, sorry guys, because I had this kind of similar lecture one week ago and uh, it didn't work well with Zoom, sorry. You can of course download this uh, yourself. I will show you, they send you later the links. Um, <clears throat> so this is my screen and uh, I'm starting the retro debugger. Um, there. It, so this is kind of a startup startup um, screen. You can see when you install this for the first time. And uh, there are some views here, as you can see. And um, I'm gonna start like the, the, the presentation of this with, uh, of course, going through the menu. Um, uh, so in principle, of course, you have a kind of sim simple menus like open file, open most recent. So when you are coding, um some something you can like just start the debugger and command or control l and just load the re most recent thing and here are the, the recent files i opened you can just select this you can insert the next commodore 64 disk so it just selects the next uh, in alphabetical order hard reset and you know also the detach everything is a kind of uh, useful thing because you with this, when you select this, I'm detaching everything, cartridges, you know, disk, uh, disk drives and et cetera, so that's removing disks from disk drive. So you can have normal clean, clean um, uh, Commodore 64. Um, then what I'm gonna, I mean, just let me skip this for a second. And just, this is quite important stuff. Also the workspace is something where you can select uh, or set up your layout, so move, you know, windows around and just you know set this as a new workspace and this will pop you know move the windows and set up then the the layout as as it was so for, i have this this like different layout for example um where i see the disassembly code on the left and the assembler source on the right as you can see this is running in kind of real time let me create a new workspace um <clears throat> to make this a little bit larger for you. Um, so when you right click on most of the windows, okay, not every, but most of the windows, you will see some context menu. So you can set, let's say for example, font size like this. And, and uh, as you can see, this is running in the real time, okay? Um, so then uh, let's have a look at the code. Code, in this menu, you have like a possibility to pause the code. Okay, so now this is in post state. Uh, here the CPU, uh, here you have the CPU status. So let's say the program counter, the um, all the registers. You can, by the way, edit them. So I can just go here and let's say change the value of the, um, okay, I, I, I changed actually, I think uh, something. Okay, so guys, uh, let me start running. Once again, and 
Oh, sorry, something happened. Of, I'm sorry, by the way, I'm using kind of unstable version, which I'm uh, heavily uh, say, implementing. This is version 0 0.64, so it's not, not very stable yet. I mean, it's um, in some moments, as you can see, right, you can hit some problems. In principle, it works, it was quite well and quite stable. However, you know, the version which I'm showing now is like um, yesterday, I did some weeks and um, anyway uh, let's come back to this so when i pause the code and i can step over like using f10 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 i'm stepping stepping over the instructions and i can also have a back step the back step is something very cool so in not only you can run you know instructions forward but you can go run them backwards as you can see i'm back stepping now in the code um, so maybe let me let me run some uh, open some mm, uh, let's say this for example. Um, yes, there is also settings, and if, if have you have you, you have here a very important setting which is called load first per G from disk. So whenever when when you insert the disk, uh, it will just load the first PRG file from top. Of the directory and uh, let me do this once again okay so this is now started uh, i'm going to show you another view mm. i'm going to show you another view which is called the um, memory map oh it's here sorry surely uh, the memory map is uh, something which i yeah wasn't in, in kind of copied a little bit the functionality from the ICU. As you can see, this here is loading now the program from disk. Uh, when you zoom in, so the value, what you see here actually is the representation of the real-time representation of the Commodore 64 rem memory displayed in a kind of color mode. So the, the here, you here are the values, so you can zoom in, pressing the space and moving around, you can just, you know, um changes the, the position where, where you where which is showed also there are some things like for example you can double click and the memory here uh is uh is moved okay let me also all right click like this <clears throat> okay so when you click on the values as you can see this is uh, changing the uh, address of the memory here and when you click double click, or maybe it's, let me pause the code. When you double click, also this moves the the the, the disassembly on the left. Um, so maybe here er, is this is load. Uh, okay, uh, let me connect my uh, gamepad. It's working. Uh, sorry, Bluetooth my it's turned off. Okay and the uh, joystick the ps4 controller okay um so i'm controlling this with my gamepad and oh, i think this is joystick two um wait a little bit yes okay uh <clears throat> so i'm you know jumping playing game etc now uh i can use the timeline here uh, to move the, the emulation to the state where it was before. So as you can see, um, I'm just now like scrubbing like on the kind of video player, uh, the, 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 the emulation state, and I can just move back to whatever I want. Also, this of course is very connected to the possibility to um, stepping back the code, okay? Um, so the, this is a time, called timeline, and uh, it's a quite cool feature when you are debugging your you know programs and don't know actually what happened. So you can just you know move back some. Uh, let's say I pause this, and you have possibility to rewind back one frame for what one frame. So I'm just now um, uh, moving this this backwards, let's say, and so uh, also. Uh, what is quite cool about this is the possibility to, when you are using the kick assembler, so I spent some time with Mads Nielsen, the author of kick assembler, 
uh, to uh, actually, um, let me, sorry, I, there's this, um, I'm not sure how to remove this uh, toolbar from Zoom actually. Uh, let's, anyway, no, no worries. Uh, so there, I, I see some toolbar from, from Zoom, which I'm always struggling with <laughs> because of oh, hide floating meeting controls. Yes, it's here. Yeah, you, you, you can drag that to the side if you want. It's always in the, it's always in, in the way. Okay, anyway, uh, I just hide it so it's hidden. Um, so what's cool about this actually is, is uh, there is a, um, a view called, so let me change this to this view again. Um, it's called the assembler source code. And this is actually now only working with the peak assembler. assembler. This is the only yeah. assembler which I, is now supported, but I'm planning to add, of course, others. Uh, let me open uh, the file, which uh, is from our demo. Um, so you can see that the, the, the effect runs on the right, once again. Um, and what you can see here is the, of course, the code, the disassembly code on the left with labels. So I can just remove them as you can see there, there's just addresses. But uh, so of course I'm parsing the labels, but also on the right, you can see this kind of matching source code, which is from the original source code. Uh, I'm implementing this actually in the Visual Studio uh, code. And there is also a nice plugin for this debugger in the, for the Visual Studio code, where you can simply um, run your programs from the Visual Studio code and like compile whole pipeline and start it. And then you have this possibility to match the, the source code on the right with the you know compiled compiled code on the left and you, of course you can step also back step right um so uh, also uh, there's um, mm, there's uh, some interesting mode uh, which i'm this is in the documentation you can find it uh and and i believe the visual studio code plugin uh, is utilizing this is the possibility to start the control the debugger from as a running process from other processes. So you don't have to restart the debugger uh, to, to load new uh, file version, let's say, of your compiled code, but you can even do this directly from the Visual Studio code, which will trigger the reset of the Commodore 64 and also trigger loading the newest version of the file, okay? So this is also uh, like you have, you can have this on the different monitor. If you have like two or three monitors set up on the left or front, you have some code, which are typing on the right, you can have the debugger, just press compile run, and it will start on the, you know, run, already running the, uh, the, the, um, um, the debugger, yeah. Um, let me back to this. Um, so actually, you know, there are some views which are quite many here. Um, maybe not gonna show you all them all, but, but the most important ones. Uh, of course, there are, there's a possibility to have a data watch, uh, the label, so the labels of data watch is a, some kind of uh, possibility to just display uh, values which are stored in the, um, in the memory. You can select also the format, let's say that would be the, the binary, for example. And uh, so these watches and the, the labels and uh, um, uh, are can be stored actually between sessions, and there is a possibility to there is a, this keep symbols menu item where you just select that. You, as you can see, actually, as you saw, the watches were already loaded. Um, they, you can of course export and import them, but let's say you are debugging or running some game, just you know hanging around, checking maybe doing a trainer for a game, and okay, you did something that is some labels there some watches, maybe breakpoints, and you just need to shut down and go you know, for dinner, get back, start game again, and you will have the watches and everything there as set up. So um, of course, if you, if you just right click here, um, you can, as you can see, there are some, um, there's some already, some labels. You can edit these labels in kind of real time. Uh, let me maybe change once again the view for a second, this one. Okay, so you can you can edit the labels. You can see that the change they are changing, um, and yeah, this kind of uh, I'm using this 
a lot for for coding it just helps me a lot also i'm like having this small side project where i'm trying to um uh, make some them uh, sort of some games like this montezuma or river right like the classical games um able to start the level without any menus just i'm thinking about at the, doing such, such cartridge for for my commodore so when i you know have some some game section session i don't have to struggle with waiting for loading and and etc so it should be just like that from i select game from the menu and it should be already the first level of this game yeah without menus um so for example it's very very useful this tool is very useful for that um and uh yeah okay so some other views um Maybe let uh, me Martin, know. maybe keeping uh, keeping the time in mind. I see we. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like we so are more or less so... the, the link. I see that there, there are already some questions because I think the, the views. Okay, I think we 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 we, we understand what, what what the tool does. It's it's of course it's, it's it is really nice. I, I see you first of the first question. Does it runs on Mac and Windows? I, I think on your website, if I'm if I'm if I'm correct, it's uh, indeed Mac Windows. You have also Linux version. Or... Yes, exactly. So the, the application runs on Linux 32 bits, yeah, Linux 64 bits, uh, Windows. Uh, yeah, I tried this in the latest, latest Windows and Mac OS, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm developing this on the Mac OS. Yeah. I see another question. Any plans to support VIC-20? <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people are asking me though, this question. And yeah, of course, uh, but I'm, I have my kind of roadmap already to uh, let's say port every view from older version which was six c64 debugger to the newest and there is actually this particular view which is not ready not here yet which is very important um, um it's called vic editor which is a full-blown let's say editor for you know painting you know um, um on commodore 64 images which what's funny about this big editor is actually that you can paint on real let's say running commodore 64 so for example you can create a multiplexer sprites multiplexer and paint over the sprites or you know paint over the, the this images like this one we, we see here on the do you know during demo presentation um and it has a possibility to load koala pictures save koala pictures etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is not ported yet <laughs> This is a priority for me, and then I, of course, yes, and then maybe I will look at the week 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 twenty. This is actually quite easy to do this. Um, I already added other emulators, so for example, not only Commodore sixty four, but also the uh, we have the Atari, and uh, and also uh, the NES. Okay, so week twenty would be just another let's say uh, another emulator for that so yes doable it's doable just uh, um, in some future okay later good okay uh, i don't see more questions is there something still i mean apart from from switching from use to use is there something that that we cannot miss that that, that you need to show now or um i'm <laughs> I'm, let's say my advice about this is to just, you can download this. The version I'm showing is unstable, which I'm posting on Facebook. And maybe you can, uh, okay, maybe let's uh, maybe show quickly uh, the page, uh, right? So there is this group on the Facebook called Retro Debugger. Um, so you can see my Facebook, nice Facebook here and I advise you just to just join this this Facebook group. Um, ask questions here. There are some people which are sharing some you know interesting stuff, and also from time to time I'm sharing here unstable versions builds. Um, and there is a like you know Google Drive page where you can download the, the unstable builds. And on GitHub actually there is only stable kind of stable I call versions, which I release maybe twice a year only. Okay, so. Uh, I guess it it would be good for you to download this. The, there is a manual called it's a readme txt. Uh, there is also some PDF for that. It's the manual is not particularly for the retro debugger as, as because it's a quite a new thing. 
but for the older Commodore 64, the background, all the concepts are the same. Yeah, so just treat the, the documentation a little bit and try to, to use this and play, you know, yourself. And, uh, you know, it's, as, it's very good for, let's say, sh showing demos, showing games, understanding how they are done. Um, there is this nice view, which is called the big display, uh, which I think is really also important for you. There is some VIC control, so we can, for example, oh, let's let us look, wait for the sum. Okay, this for example, and uh, it works in a way that if, if if you can see that I'm moving here some like cross here, and on the left here you can see that the disassembly code changes. So it works in a way that it shows the kind of state of the current. Um, uh, where is the VIC? This is a state of the registers of the VIC. When I'm moving this, um, it changes all this, all the uh, registers, and also changes the code uh, to show the kind of um, state of emulation when it was when it was displaying this particular cycle. And it's good for debugging. For example, if you would like to open borders on left, right then you can see what exactly happened in this moment when you need, you know, here, open the border, change the D016, but uh, let's say something happened, okay? It's not working. So you can just check what, what happened. And also uh, you can change the, um, say, force, the position in memory where is, for example, bitmap. So now it's still at two zero 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 zero. I can change it for other, you know, other, um, other places. Also, you can see it here that, for example, they are using in this particular effect three buff, uh, the off, off screen buffers, for example. It's jumping like that. So, yeah, this VIC display is uh, like X ray for VIC and so quite, quite awesome and can help you with a lot of things. For musicians, uh, it's a hit, hit tracker history. When I pause this, you cannot hear this, but I can, you know, scroll this up and just see the notes. Maybe let me make this a little bigger. Uh, so you can see the, the notes, okay, here. Um, and also when you scroll this up, you can hear the state of the seed as it was in, you know, just frame ago. Also, you can just move this a little bit. And my addition, next addition is actually to, con to possibility to con control this over MIDI. It actually works. And actually both ways. So for example, you can control with this, and the MIDI device. So if you are, let's say, you could hit record in your DAW and, and then um, let's say record through the MIDI, the notes, which is Commodore 64 playing. Good, Marcin, th th thanks a lot. I, I, I know I see there is still <laughs> plenty of things to go through. Uh, yeah. what, I, what I suggest what uh, you, you could do is to also to, um, to post the, in the chat uh, when we when we close here now we post the, the the link to the group and then if people have more questions if you can still stay a bit around then then you can you can answer the questions in the chat sure okay. of course so of course. thanks a lot i will stop i will stop the recording now because um yes are you sure you want yes